Welcome back to the Chill Zone Podcast. I'm your host, Vic. And of course, I'm here with both of my uh, amazing co-hosts this week. Roger. Hey, guys. And Miko. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? What's happening? Uh, Miko, man, <laughs> how you been since you missed <laughs> out last week? <laughs> yeah, nah, yeah I've, been, I've been pretty good, man. Real busy, for sure. Just I work a shit ton. Just trying to, you know, play catch up with my streaming and stuff like that. And, you know, clipping and editing my content. And also getting into, you know... The JDM world, looking for my first project car and stuff like that. We were talking about, but uh, other than that, I've been yeah, just good, just trying to take it day by day. Yeah, no doubt, cool. no doubt. What you been playing other than Warzone? Anything? Uh, other than Warzone, no, <laughs> nothing really. <laughs> this yeah, it's just like I said, it's, it's pretty much like robotic. I just go to work, come back, and it's just Warzone, Warzone, Warzone. Everybody just hits me up to play Warzone anyway, so it's just like I don't feel the need to play any other game. Right, yeah, understandable. I mean, this is a war zone horror at this point, man. Yeah. Just being tossed <laughs> around on team to team. Right, right. Yeah, but I say we we be running with us three, and then it's, sometimes it's with Tyreek, and sometimes yeah. it's with Ramik, and and it, it, you be running with David and X and Jamal, and yeah. definitely, definitely a ton of people, and then your boy like Chris and whatnot. So okay. yeah, you definitely all over the place. Yeah, trying, I'm trying to spread too thin, but yeah, I'm just trying. <laughs> right, right, no doubt. But uh, you been working on yourself at all? No, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, with finances mainly, it's been my main focus. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be catch up with that. You know, I'm definitely, you know, good since Houston. But, you know, just I'm always looking for growth and whatnot. Looking for new plays, you know, just aspiring. Right, but, uh, yeah. no, yeah, I, I definitely feel the need. I, I should probably get in the gym more. You know, I haven't touched the weight in months. And it's that's probably extremely detrimental to my health i smoke a lot so it's, it's like, <laughs> i gotta have a balance somewhere yeah yeah for sure what about you roger how you been pretty good i got my stimulus check this week uh <laughs> oh, so <hell> yeah. <laughs> being somebody who's actually good with my money uh fiscally stable yeah. i decided to invest in some new computer parts i'm so excited about to update my like five to seven year old motherboard and cpu and I got right, all of yeah. it right behind me now. I'm just waiting to put it together. I just need the case, yeah, which will be here. Didn't do it already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I got it as I was walking in the door, and you're like, "Let's play Warzone." I was like, "All right, let's go." <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. You know, I don't have the case yet, so I can put it all together. But that, other than right, that, right, right, just been but, playing. Uh, you yeah, know, what you been doing? Uh, yeah, Warzone with you, as you know, and a lot of other people, especially like freaking. Bass out here, Spooky Cruz yelling at me, like calling me a noob for playing freaking Call of Duty now. But no, I, I'm actually genuinely really enjoying Warzone. Like, I it has something for me that most other, um, most other, you know, PUBG style games are great. Like, I, I actually think this has stuff that all these other games, like, fuck, dude, Fortnite sucks. Like, just straight up, that game, that game, like, as you've said before, you shoot somebody and all of a sudden a tower, a fortress appears out of nowhere, and you're like, well, I quit, I quit. I'm done. Uh, right, right. No, I, I think what helps out with Warzone is it's so familiar. I mean, you, you've grown. We, we've played hundreds of hours of Call of Duty for a long time. Yeah. And now this was just an easy transition. Like, Warzone just gives you that Call of Duty feel, yeah. but with that Battle Royale touch to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. I like that. just have a really good realism with it, too. Just so tactical. Yeah. You know, like, you, just, you really have to communicate and really work together, to, you know, to win that shit. You know? mm -hmm. And honestly, I, I would say one thing against uh, what Catacris says here. I don't think COD costs money at all. I put ten dollars in it, and that's, you know, that's because I just wanted to get the battle pass once. Other than mm -hmm. that, it's a free game. Right. Yeah, I mean, un unless they're talking about like if you want to play Modern Warfare or Cold War. Oh yeah. Obviously, you got to buy that. Yeah. And, but people forget that Warzone's free to play. Yeah, you can just other download than if you Warzone. want to buy the battle pass and stuff, just like Apex Legends and Fortnite. It's all the same. Yeah, it's all the same stuff. I agree with that. But other than that, I've been playing some WoW. We got uh we got through the ninth boss out of ten on heroic, and 
Yeah, no, seriously, the whole game, it's it's free. The only thing you pay for is the battle pass if you want it. Okay. Uh, let me know. We can play it sometime, Cata, <laughs> Chris. But no, honestly, I, I've been playing a bunch of WoW, a bunch of uh, Warzone, and I finally got some of my minis started again for, uh, D &D, for uh, Warhammer. Right. And right. Uh, other than that, you know, Warhammer. about to get ready for... Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah, Spooky yeah. Crew. AOTC next week. We're about to finish Heroic on, uh, on Castle Nathria. So once that's done, I've hit my goal for, you know, the raid for this patch this whole overarching part of the game right all right so okay, be cool. okay you've been uh you've been working on yourself at all reading just reading trying to keep my brain active other than just sitting there playing games all the time and watching movies and tv shows <laughs> just melting your mind away to the screen like yeah. ah, need more yeah mm -hmm. exactly i can't sleep if i play too many video games like i'll get done at 11 i'm like I have to spend an hour unwinding, or I like I'll sit there and just dream all night, and then I'll wake up exhausted. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely understand that one. But no, how about yourself, Vic? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm I'm hanging in there. I'm just uh, as you can see behind me, I'm in the midst of uh, packing up and moving. I'm um, coming back to PA, so I can really I feel, feel the echo, it. dude. <laughs> Oh really? Is yeah. It, is, it, is it that bad? Uh, it, yeah, it's a little more echoey because there's not nothing to really soak up the sound. It's all bouncing off your walls now, dude. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's the down part. But yeah, I mean, other than that, I'm doing good. Just hanging in there, working, keeping busy, playing a game and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of the game, I've been playing again a lot of Warzone with, with both you guys and whoever I can, whoever's online and stuff. Um, but I did. I beat Immortals Phoenix Rising, so I gotta get that game review up soon. Mm -hmm. But um, I just started the game. Tell me why. One of those games we covered a while back mm -hmm. in one of our episodes, and that game is uh, from the moment the the first scene had me hooked. Okay. I was like, oh man, this is crazy. This is like really deep. Like, like the beginning. The, um, this isn't really spoiling anything. Like literally, the first scene opens up, and you see this little boy in a police station. Um, he's just sitting at like one of the desks. And um, then the police officer comes in. He was like, hey, man, everything's going to be all right. I just have some questions for you. And he goes on to, like, explain the events that happened. And he said that his mom tried to kill him. And so <laughs> he had to defend himself and had to kill her. And then apparently, like, it fast forwards and you, he's in, like, a, like a rehab thing, probationary thing until he turns 18 because he was – he killed somebody obviously but yeah. i guess they didn't see, find him uh and it's but i guess you you discover all the like what happened during the game and stuff like that and it's just like really touching and you finally meet up with your uh twin sister and then you guys like go back and start to discover a lot of things so it's been a very interesting game it's like more of like one of those uh narr narrative games like walking sims almost mm -hmm. almost um, like uh um what is that it, uh, you shared a thing today on the channel uh square annex's game yeah yeah, it was sort of like uh, their games. Strange, yeah, yeah that, Life yeah. is Strange or like Firewatch, one of those sort of narrative style, not like, you know, action packed games. Right, right. Or like the Telltale games. That, it, mm -hmm. that That's what it really reminds me of. But yeah, I've been hooked on that, so that, that's been pretty good. But uh, I've also been playing The Medium, another game we just talked about recently. Uh, that game's been very interesting. It's very creepy, for sure. I was told <laughs> it wasn't very good from the reviews I saw. It was like getting, yeah. you know, okay to mediocre reviews. It feels clunky and it feels old. It has like this old PS1, PS2 vibe, like having the you, you walk to an area, you click, and then it you, like zooms in and you feel like look around, pick up the item, goes into your inventory, mm -hmm. and then you gotta like back out of what <sighs> you're just clicking in. Like the controls just feel old and clunky, but the game looks beautiful. It feels like a PC. and like when you're not when <laughs> what's that? I said it maybe feels like a PC game where you're supposed to have a mouse and be able to click on things. Not even. It's just like you're walking around and the camera changes depending on where you're at in the room. Like the old style, like. Oh, camera okay. So like, like the camera that's back here looking down on you. Yeah, it's like back here, and then like you move to the corner, it like moves to the side, and then like mm -hmm. then it's like on a weird front angle, and it's just like mm -hmm. there's a lot of problems. But I'll be able to talk about that in the game review. It doesn't seem like it's going to review too well, but <laughs> it, what it's doing though, because it's running two basically two games at once side by side. So like it's. It's definitely pushing the limits of my console, like what it's meant to do with the uh, SSD. So oh, wow. we'll see how it goes. Maybe it progressively gets better and, and whatnot, but it's very clunky. But um, other than that, I have not been working on myself other than my finances, make, making sure I'm good on money and mm -hmm. making sure I have a job lined up and stuff like that. So other than that, I'm good. It's pretty awesome. Good to hear. But, uh, 
Yeah, but uh, let, let's get on to uh, the gaming topics this week. We actually got a lot of gaming news to get into. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to start off with the uh, the Outer Worlds. Um, have uh, either of you guys ever played the game? I beat the game, actually. I, I actually beat the uh, game before any of the DLC came out. And I got to say, it was a really good successor for, um, for like, a Fallout-style game to me. Um, it was amazing. Um, me and mm-hmm. Spooky Crew talked a bunch about it when we were playing it. Um, I thought it was a genuinely awesome game. Being honest, though, I'm not going to go back for any of the DLCs, I think. Um, For me, the game didn't feel like um, there was more I wanted to explore once I had finished the story, because then I have to redo the story to go do the DLC kind of thing. Because it's one of those games, your choice at the end ends the game. The game is over once you finish your choice. So you kind of have to backroll it from the end or start a new character. Right. Okay. Yeah, I I played like the first like maybe thirty minutes of the game before like right right around when it first came out, and I was like, I don't have time to invest in this game right now. I'm playing too many other games, and I know this game was probably going to take a decent amount of time to beat because it's 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 basically like Fallout. Obviously, it's made by Obsidian, who yeah. made Fallout New Vegas, so it, it has the Fallout New Vegas vibe for sure. And it's a game that I want to get into, but I'm personally waiting for the uh, the Series X enhancement. Because it's not enhanced yet, so mm-hmm. I might as well wait until I have that, play it, and then I'll be able to get into or just, it. And or maybe just play it on PC, because when you're coming up this, you know, next weekend, you're getting a freaking graphics card for free, so <laughs> now you can start right. gaming. Yeah, yeah, true, but I don't know if I'll be able to get the gamer score. I need the gamer score for my Xbox account. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm big on that. But um, in regards to Outer Worlds, new DLC was announced, so it, it looks pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, it, I feel like they gotta find a better way, maybe with their next game, to integrate the DLC. It sounds for me, like, but, uh... for me, the big issue I think with the DLC is the DLC isn't like um, picture Borderlands DLC. You know, when you get one of those, it adds on like a whole new gimmick to the game. Like for Tina, a tiny Tina's D, uh, D- uh, Dungeons and Dragons adventure or whatever, you literally okay. went through like a D and D world, or like you went to. Um, uh, you went to the Thunderdome and you fought in a Thunderdome for Mad Moxie. You know, there's all these yeah, different, like, that. you go to these zones and it just feels like an action-packed big thing. Whereas this, it just, it gives you a nice new linear story, adds a new zone, here's a few new guns and a few new perks and stuff to change your gameplay. Mm-hmm. The game, to me, didn't feel like there was uh, a super big amount of replayability, personally. But for a lot of people, there is for them. And maybe in a year or two, after a few more DLCs come out, I might replay that. But um, I do like, yeah, I agree with Spooky Crew here. It does look deeper into the setting of um, this expansion, or this uh, this game. Uh, This expansion will add a new zone that's sort of like based on a planet that has um, multiple floating city blocks. And you have to right. traverse between these floating islands, essentially. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and this new DLC, I think, is like behind like a murder scene or something like that. Yeah. I guess you're investigating a murder, if I'm not mistaken. That's what they said. Yeah, you'll be investigating yeah. a murder that has happened on this planet. Yeah, I mean, it looks cool. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, I can't wait to hop in and, and play the game. But what about you, Meek? <laughs> you, you, would you ever check it out? No, yeah, I definitely can see myself playing the game. I had a lot of fun with Fallout. You guys referenced Fallout, and it did mm-hmm. seem like a you know Fallout type of game for sure. You know, and I mean, it seems you know pretty, you know, capturing. You know, I, I wouldn't. You know, does it cost money? Is it free or? Uh, the base uh, game. I think it's on Game Pass if you have Game Pass. Yeah, yeah, I have Game Pass. Uh, so yeah, it's convenient. I definitely, yeah, I can see. Myself and you'll get the DLC it. with Game Pass. It, I'm pretty sure it'll always be on Game Pass too because it's a um, Microsoft Studio game. Yes, it yeah. is. And honestly, if you want to try it out, it's definitely a great game. You'll definitely love it. It's a nine out of ten in my book. Um, it just felt a little short. But that's one of the joys about it. It right. it's a quick game. You don't have to invest a hundred hours into it. You know, speedrunners beat the game in like an hour. Right. Not for sure. Yeah. <laughs> quick climax. You, know, you can't get mad at it though. If it's you know, if it's really that good, you know, it doesn't really need that much time. Yeah. I like I right. honestly and, and would have loved thing, more to keep going. I noticed is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, games, games nowadays seem like they're so long and that's why like some a lot of people stray away from playing games, like yeah. certain games because especially the new Assassin's Creed, like they take anywhere from 60 to 90 hours to beat. Yeah. And, and a lot of people don't want that. They want the, the old 15 to 20 hour gameplay mm-hmm. to beat them. And I, I think like if, if you're telling me it's not that long, like it'll allow me to be able to hop in it once it's um, enhanced. 
because when it's a to look 4K 60 frames per second. Yeah, you'll definitely like the game. It's it's a real nice short sweet game. Uh, if you're following through the story and you want to do every storyline, you can probably get it done in 15 20 hours. Okay. Yeah, it's not, not, bad. Bad. not bad. Not bad at all. No, no, it was definitely a great game. Right. Cool. Well, let's move on to the next topic here. I mean, this is something maybe uh, me can definitely uh, talk about a little bit more here is the uh, college football game. Um, won't launch until 2023, apparently. Um, did you play a lot of college football back in the day? I definitely did, yeah. And I had, like, one go-to play. It was just, like, uh, it was play action, and then the running back just, like, cuts down behind the offensive line and just you just dump it. It was LB. And just, every time we say LB. I used to play it with Ja'Kai and Jamal way back in the day. But uh, yeah, I'm not surprised that you know it, it's 2023. You know, it's it, it. College football is huge, and you know the way the and with the way the economy and stuff like that is now, and you know they're so business oriented. Like some, they got to make sure everybody gets paid, everybody's accounted for, and stuff like that. And there's so many teams and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm not surprised right. it's going to take super long, but I'm pretty excited for it. I definitely played it a lot back then. Right. Yeah, I think you just hit it on the head. I, um, I personally think it's being pushed out to 2023 because they're trying to figure out all the legal aspects of this. Yeah. About about being like, are they going to be able to pay the uh, the athletes for the likeness likeliness or like otherwise? Like if 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 they don't have likeliness, likeness. it's gonna it's gonna feel weird. It's like when I'm gonna be playing a game with random players that don't make sense. Like mm. if say Ohio State has this bomb ass team, but the Ohio State in the game is trash. <laughs> but like, <laughs> where are they going to make this work? That, yeah. That's what I really come down to. Or like, I don't know if it sounds weird, but make a college game where it's like th- three or four years old, timeline wise, to for all the players that are in the NFL now, so they can get paid. Or yeah. I don't know. I'm just thinking of like some crazy things that they could yeah. do. Well, I noticed yeah. in the articles they said they wanna they wanna go back through all the stadiums and uh, stuff across the United States and get a new picture of what they're like so that mm. they can recreate them for one. But two, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm definitely very worried about the likeness and you know college athletes being kind of you know used. rammed by this used. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're they're yeah. getting they're the ones eating the they're getting the short end of the stick. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a great example was back when Zion was playing at Duke in that Duke versus North Carolina game. Like, pre- like everybody was going to that game. If you wanted to go to that game, you're probably looking at tickets roughly about a thousand dollars or more. Yeah. Like, they cost more than most like championship games. Dude, the plane tickets cheaper. Yeah, it was crazy. And you think like one player is drawing that much attention and that much money to your school. And he doesn't get anything out of that. And and the thing is, the half the time they're missing out on their studies too, because they're so overworked in these college football fields. Yeah, and that's that, another thing, like they get they get penalized for getting money from from gifts or help from other people. Mind you, that these these kids are going to school in class as much as they can. Then they're at practice in games as much as they can, and they don't have an opportunity to work. So yeah. what do you want them to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're away from their families every holidays. You know what and I'm saying? Like it's even if work. it, even if they just paid them, you know, an hourly salary while they're, you know, either playing a game or they're or they're training, it it, mm-hmm. it helps to cut down the need for them to have a a job and things like that. Because I'll be honest, college athletes they can't afford to have a job and do it school. And, exactly. That's what I'm yeah. saying. They can't afford to have an actual you know job versus you know professional sports you know or like semi-professional sort sports so i think it's it's a really big gray area right now and l- mm-hmm. let's be honest here college college uh managers and people running the show are making more money than professional you know athletes they're all making money equivalent to that of like LeBron James is making the same amount of money as some of these college coaches. It's crazy how big college sports is. Yeah. So I don't and, know if it's close in contract wise. Yeah, it's it's millions of dollars yeah, about, without sponsorships and stuff included. Yeah. But like I'm saying, just flat rate what they're making, not without gifts and sponsorships. These college these college coaches are making, you know, some are making hundred million dollars. Yeah, that doesn't make sense how the coaches get paid, but the players don't. Yeah, the coaches are making a hundred million dollars a year, and it's like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, take some of that money and split it amongst your kids, and and then college your, prices your are still skyrocketing. Education and like professors 
are yeah, the whole issue is colleges in general are really raping the the millennials and future generations. Man, they're raping the economy because you think about yeah. it like the, the the professors don't get paid. The, the students don't get paid. The players don't get paid. Tuition and the cost to go to college is astronomically way too high, and it keeps it keeps rising. And and it's just like, and they then they force the idea of like you have to go to college. You have to go to college. Well, and then, not only do you have to, they jobs make you half the time anyway. They're like you need yeah, it. Yeah, like I sent you jobs qualified. for the treasury, and they're like you need you know eight credits of accounting, or you need an a, an associates in an accounting degree. So you have to yeah. go, but then you but then, you amass so much debt that you know your quality of life is worse than any generation before us. Like what we can buy for our dollar. Right. Yeah, because even when I was trying to get a car, my quote unquote debt to income ratio is is bad. Mm -hmm. Whether I don't know if all of my student loans account towards that or not. But even then, it's just like, what yep. the, like, it, it sets me back so much further. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I definitely think the college football thing being pushed back to 2023, it gives them more time to do what they're not going to do. But, you know, we can be hopeful at least. <laughs> you know, the, the college athletes are getting screwed here, and I think yeah. it's it's a giant scam. Uh, whereas, like, professional sports games, it's a little bit of a different story. Right, exactly. Yeah. And colleges aren't even that, that like... Yeah, expensive to run in general. And yeah, exactly, Sammy. It's it's a, it's college, and and that's not and that's the thing. They're still cutting corners, even though college is inexpensive to run. They're not tenuring professors anymore. Professors are getting tenured on a like an astronomically smaller rate than they used to be. Professors need to have second jobs. College professors have to have a second job. I, I some of my college professors weren't getting tenured, so they had to go work at the local Weiss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's they're awful. teaching college like, courses. <laughs> like teachers in general, whether it's high school, elementary, college, should be able to live off, live off of their income, and they don't. They can't. Mm -hmm. They always got to pick up another job, no matter what. And, yep. that, and that's something that needs to change. But I don't see it changing anytime soon because that means it's less money for these institutions to. Make yeah. money. Their revenue is going to go down a little bit. But you know that's that's college as it is. But yeah. like, moving on to the next gaming topic, at least, so we don't fall down a rabbit hole any further. Yeah. <laughs> Bethesda. We talked about it last week. They officially joined the Microsoft team, and so you want to give us a little bit about what's going on here this week with Bethesda, Vic? Yeah, yeah. Um, so Bethesda and Xbox they added twenty game, twenty of their games to uh, the Game Pass, which is mm -hmm. exciting, and it's across all like multiple generations. There's games from the original Xbox with uh, Morrowind, and then up to up to Xbox One games. It, it, it it's really cool to see this finally take place and how they added that so quickly. And then um, also, I think with like four or five of their games, um, they're getting the uh, FPS boost, which oh, that's was awesome. another that we talked about recently where they're basically allowing these games to get 120 frames per second if they can or 60 or whatever it is it's not completely unlocking it but boosting these games to look even better yeah than what they were but in the same part they also give you the option to turn that feature on and off so if you want to play the game how it originally looked and how there it was originally intended to be played mm -hmm. you can turn it off but if you want to play the best possible version of the game turn it on because they also have auto hdr too which okay. makes these games look even better that's cool but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. This is this is the beginning of their um, their uh, co collaboration, and I'm excited to see what's going to happen, especially with like the the games like um, Starfield, which is that we haven't seen anything of it yet. That's the new game being made by uh, Bethesda with uh, Todd Howard at the ring. Mm -hmm. um, you still got Elder Scrolls Six in the works. You got the new Fallout game that's in the works. You got probably uh, Wolfenstein 3 in the works, Dishonored 3 in the works, Evil Within 3 in the works. Like You got all of these games that are lining up that could all be Xbox exclusives. <laughs> you don't you don't spend $7.5 billion to not make a splash in the industry, to not change anything, mm -hmm. to not make people uncomfortable. And I think that's what they're doing. Basically, they had their roundtable meeting, and Phil Spencer was like... Um, Basically, just be prepared. All these new games that are going to come out will be on any platform that has Game Pass. Okay. So that's basically saying everywhere except PlayStation. <laughs> and yeah, no, that's I'm I'm really actually I'm really excited. excited. I I I am so excited now that Bethesda is part of um, Microsoft because it 
for Microsoft is going to force the new game creation. Whereas I think, you know, Skyrim, the seventh release is nice not having finally. <laughs> we can finally just put Skyrim to rest like the garbage it was. We yeah, can finally Nico, bury Nico it. Said that earlier in the week when I uh, posted the article in there, and he was like, man, they just keep milking, milking Skyrim. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. My manager was talking about it, though, like, and he's a big fan, and he's like, it says, like, he, like, can see it blatantly. Like, they're just trying to milk money out of it, but he loves it every single time. He says he puts in, he put in probably, like, over 2,000 hours of Skyrim when it was, like, yeah. a thing. <laughs> so yeah. it's like it has a huge culture behind it. It's, re- it's respectable for sure. We can't play it all. <laughs> Why can't I, play it? I love that. But um, oh, yeah. talking about Iron though, real quick. Um, basically, what Game Pass though is. Re- revitalized a lot of these communities like Skyrim or or uh, Elder Scrolls Online, I should say, saw a huge boost in players. Yeah, and in uh, and Fallout seventy six, huge boost in players as well because mm-hmm. now it's more accessible. Now now it's like, ah, uh, do I really want to spend fifty sixty dollars on this game that I'm not a hundred percent sure on? But yeah, go ahead and play. It's free. Most people have Game Pass if they have Xbox. Yeah, like you already if you already pay ten dollars a month for to have. Xbox Live, I'm sure you can shell out five more dollars to get gold or um, Game Pass. Like it, it's a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really nice because um, a lot of people don't get to really experience some of these older games, like Morrowind, for example. A lot of people didn't mm-hmm. play these games, and I think for the people who out there are completionists who want to play all these games, it's a nice it's a nice thing that they're adding all these like classic games. So that people can play them on Game Pass, it's it's literally meant to be like the Library of Congress for games. It feels like. Well, yeah, you speak about Library of Congress, and I like that that um this metaphor too is because like Xbox is trying to preserve games. Like they want you to be able to experience all of these games from all across generations and years, mm-hmm. just so they never fall to the wayside. Like it's 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 really like films. We still watch The Wizard of Oz, don't we? movie came out what the 20s the 30s or whatever like they, they preserve film why don't they preserve games and and microsoft is and xbox are huge on preserving yeah. games that's why their backwards compatibility it, it, it's been one of the best features yeah sadly sadly designing a game though sometimes it depending on how the game was written future technologies can sometimes break bad code. <laughs> so, right. it, like Spooky Crew was saying, you know, if you take the creation engine above 60 FPS, what happens? <laughs> Stuff can... Well, no, they, they, said they, they said that that's why the FPS boost isn't going to be for every game. Yeah. Because they found that it makes the games break in a certain way, and, like, you start to, like, do something, and then you see, like, a, a an, um npc off to the side like going haywired or something <laughs> yeah you're just like all right yep let's turn it back down guys we can't have this up yeah because it's... this is all done by the platform they're actually not going into the game code and, and adjusting mm-hmm. the actual game they're just fixing it on the platform level yeah which is which is a unique technology to see yeah so no i'm i'm really excited about it um to see these games finally join and be free if you have a game pass which is really cool because like somebody like you who didn't really play rpg games it's it's something if yeah. you want to it allows me to get into, into a lot of these games yeah, yeah. i'm excited they play through a lot of it because I, I i haven't played a lot of these games that were added i mean obviously i played through halo or geez halo fallout fallout 4 was great i beat that one um uh with the first wolfenstein game i played and beat it i enjoyed it um mm. they don't have the wolfenstein 2 yet i'm sure there's a reason why it's not on game pass yet but once that's there i'm hopping right on that yeah. um Dishonored, I I kind of played the first one, but I never beat it. So that'll be good to go back to play that one and beat it. And the second one's on there, so I can do that. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to to getting in these games and beating them. Cool. So um, you said this to me earlier this week for the next topic here. You you posted it, <laughs> and I was beyond livid. So <laughs> Halo now, their next big thing they're posting is you can kick people off the Halo ring itself, just like Sparta kick them off the Halo ring. Yeah, it seems interesting. I according to their um their little blog post update or whatever cuz they've been doing these little updates here and there and they were implying that <laughs> you can like literally you have to time it right or something like that. There's a very specific way to be able to kick them off and I guess you'll just have to kind of discover that. Obviously, you can't just willy-nilly like, "All right, cool, I kicked him off." Like you can't it's not like that. But I think it's pretty cool that the environment isn't like very static it's like a dynamic environment that you can really if you really go to length to do that and you try for it it's going to happen 
Yeah. It's not I, like you you hit an invisible wall like, oh nope, he can't go past there. I think it's a little a little funky to me personally because uh, I just I why would anyone build a structure that you can fall off of it into space? Well, you do know that this this is the Halo Ring Zeta, and it's a ring that's uh, being worked on. It's okay, under construction. So, there you go. That's why, unlike the right. uh, construction zones, I guess, you'll be able to knock people off. So it's All not right. completed yet. All so right. So that'll be pretty cool. But, um, <laughs> oh, she would have um, a fit. <laughs> Nick, we, we talked a little bit about a Halo before in the pre-show. Yeah. Um, did you play much of the um, Halo games, Meek? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, my good friend of mine, you know him, Steve. He was like yeah. really, really into that. And a lot of our friends back from high school are actually really into it. You know, some were like semi pro and stuff like that. I don't think anybody got professional, mm-hmm. but uh, it, uh, yeah, it was definitely a part of my culture growing up. And uh, yeah, I still play the Master Chief Collection to this day. Like sometimes I re-download it to play with Steve. But like Roger was saying, it's just super, super sweaty, super sweaty. It's so sweaty. Yeah. I, I kind of stay away from the multiplayer anymore. Yeah. Halo, it's just it's the heyday. Me. The heyday was one thing. Now, when a new Halo game launches, if the game's actually yeah, good, then the multiplayer is good. But like, let's be honest here: the last Halo game was Halo Three. A yeah. Halo Four was <laughs> good at times, I but like, like Halo Three was the great game. Reach was amazing. Yeah, I forgot Reach about. Fun. Yeah, Reach yeah, yeah was fun. forgot Reach is after three for a minute there. But yeah, no, yeah. They, <laughs> they're good games. But going back to them and playing multiplayer now. It felt like they were like, okay, Call of Duty has a lot of potential. Let's try and take some of their stuff and let's try to be like them. And it just... Yeah, adding loadouts and, and create a class and stuff. Yeah, and I think and that really killed the game. Minute. And you know what's killing yeah. the new game for me, though? What? The removed dual wielding. Yeah, I was about to say Fuck yeah. this, dude. What do you mean <laughs> taking one of my you favorite dual features? Dual really was only a thing in like Halo 2, two three. The two wheelers? Yeah, dude. Two... What? Yeah, that's <laughs> Crazy. But it, it kind of makes sense, like if you're gonna have Master Chief with equipment and, and abilities again, I guess like because it wasn't in Reach when they had those abilities and stuff. So it makes sense, like you imagine he yeah Master trying Chief to, trying to, to hold two guns reach. and you're like here, let me pull out my freaking grenade. <laughs> it just wouldn't make sense. <laughs> oh, I threw my gun too. Crap. <laughs> no, I yeah. agree. Uh, it's just it's one of those features that I always liked dual wielding in the game, running around with right. two needlers, well, as Meek said. You know, <laughs> that was the right. Shit. Well, one, one one good thing I can you can say out of this is they say that they they never confirmed it. It's never going to be added. It's just not in the game right now. I, the game. It's they're, Halo Infinite. They're this, this polishing the, the game right now. They said. Uh, no, they are. But you got to realize, Halo Infinite is the new yeah. platform. They want they want to be able to support this game, add content to this game for like ten years yeah. at least. That's gross. I, they I have think some very ambitious goals and ambitious they, uh, live yeah. up home. Well, maybe it'll be a progressive story instead of like, all right, let's go back, add some DLC in the middle of it here, and let's add some DLC uh-huh. here, sprinkle some DLC there. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I think as I've said before, Halo Infinite is going to put a nail in the coffin of the series. I I honestly think it's Call of Duty is that. going to finally kill off Halo when they flop this. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy though, but because because Hulk, I feel like Call of Duty keeps flopping with their games. They, I mean, Cold War was garbage. Dude. Modern Warfare was it was fun. I loved. I actually enjoyed Modern Warfare a lot. But like, a lot of games haven't been good. Well, the only thing that Call of Duty has right now is Warzone, and yeah, I can't well, say only. And the thing is, Cold War doesn't flop. It didn't flop as a thing because it has stuff that keeps it alive. You get yeah, experience well, for your guns in Warzone. Call of Duty games of all time, for and some you have reason. zombies. Yeah. That's that's what the game is to me. I only bought it so that maybe I'll play the story, but I wanted to level up my guns in and I played zombies. I'm not gonna play the multiplayer. Not even gonna touch it. You know, I'm making it a single player, you know, cooperative game. <laughs> that's that's right. what it is. So Right. No, you're but for uh, sure. I'll be honest, I think the Halo Infinite it is also it's gonna be rough and I don't also like that I don't like that they removed the elites from the game. Did you also see that? Yeah, seen that you can't. There play. are you, no. The game. Yeah, you, you there just, are no playable play elites. But the thing is, like, you know, what really happens to the Arbiter's fleet? Why isn't he re-added to the story here? You know, no, he went off to be a. No, they're in the game. Yeah, yeah. You you can't play as them. Like, but in do they help you out? Oh, you can't play as no. them in multiplayer. Yeah, and they did that for like a like an actual competitive reason. Like when you're playing, yeah, Smash, it's like 
it's like headshots only. It was harder to hit an elite then, in the head. Then you disable. Than it was to then you disable elites in that game mode. Come on, they're bad developers. Let's mm. be honest. Three four three is a shitty developer. It seems like it. Like, they're a they, really shitty developer. Like Halo Four was good. They look good. Like, uh, I'll be honest but, here. Uh, Riot is better at making a competitive game at this point than they are. Eh, I don't think Halo, Halo Wars, Wars 3. 3. <laughs> yeah, Halo Wars 2. Like Halo Wars 2, I didn't even know dropped. Halo Wars 1 was... Halo Wars was good. But 2, I didn't even know it fucking dropped. I was like... It it was on sleep for me, dude. I, I saw it hit and I yeah, went... You, there was a 2? <laughs> yeah, you asked me that the one day. You're like, when did they make a 2? And I'm like, I don't know, like 34 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh. Because you were like, they're stopping development on Halo Wars 2. Like, they're done, mo you know, continuing to make changes. I was like, wait. They made a second one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. But uh, enough of the Halo talk. Let's get into our next game here. One of the games that we've talked about quite a few times, honestly, is uh, Watch Dogs Legion. It's yeah. a game that we don't know really how to feel other than like the campaign was meh, multiplayer is meh. I said it before. It's it was a game. It was a game. <laughs> it was a game, it's a game made by Ubisoft. It was a game that now just added uh, the ability for cross-play and cross-gen play. So I think for it's what? becoming a safe They're it's, shitty it's, it's multiplayer? A, it's because they already got a small player base. They got to combine it. So it, <laughs> yeah. they can it. <laughs> try to keep it alive just a little longer yeah. so we can get our DLC and cash shop working. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that game. Just... <laughs> that's all they're doing they're just like okay how can we get the cash shop that literally is a single player only game for the most part to be relevant they built a cash shop into a single player only game Jesus yeah, I'm just insane. saying Ubisoft I, I, are you talking about when you can buy outfits and all this other yeah, customization in single stuff. player only but you can customize your character. You can have them wear whatever they want. Why is that that shit unlockable? I remember when things used to be fucking unlockable. Yes. Right, just by completing challenges. Yes, yes. yeah. And, and that, that's, that's what Call of Duty had to do because they were making it where like you had to buy the supply drops or buy yeah. this or buy that to be able to get the guns, these new guns. But then they started to add, if you want this gun, just go go complete these challenges and then you yeah. get it for free. Yeah, no, I like and that. that yeah, like, I've been getting free shit in, in Warzone, and I'm just like, this is cool. And then, like, one of the operators I got has challenges to unlock more customizations. And it's like, get this many kills in zombies. And I'm like, cool! That's awesome! Right. It just gives you reasons to play yeah. it and, like, different ways to take on it every time you play it if you wanted to go for those challenges. Yeah, no, I but thought yeah, it I agree was... With Watch Dogs. It's, it's a dying game at this point. Maybe Watch Dogs 3 or whatever their next one's gonna be. I really hope they stop this year. They the just route. need to... <sighs> It's not going anywhere. No, I promise you. No, it isn't. You, you gonna, it's gonna. It's because it's not a bad game. The ideas are there, but Watch Dogs Two was great, and the first one was a, was good, but Legion was. Meh. Yeah. Well, jumping into Legion after I've been hurt and scorned by so many Ubisoft games, I'm like, I'm done with Ubisoft. I'll take another hiatus, twice as long as the last one. <laughs> right. Me, Kev, uh, did you ever play any of the Watch Dogs at all? I'm not I sure. Actually, sorry, I was, my, no, my dog was tweaking. <laughs> you good. <laughs> but, uh, no, I've always seen it uh, being uh, previewed and all hyped up and stuff like that. I never just got a chance to play it. Though. I just, yeah, like, you know, it always, just like Roger said, you said it perfectly. It's just always seemed like just a game to me. So, like, it, it never seemed worth it. Yeah, it, like, but, uh, do yourself a favor, skip Legion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just skip Legion. I, I, I recommend playing the first two. Those are fun. I like those ones. Yeah. And like the hacking abilities and driving through the city to, to trigger the red lights and, and all that other stuff actually had purpose mm -hmm. as opposed to Legion. Legion was like, you can kind of still do it, but there's no point. They don't chase you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I fucking did like an execution style kill in the middle of the street next to a police officer in there and they were like, have a good one. And I was like, dude, isn't this supposed to be literally a military state right now? <laughs> uh, there is... They could have done better with the AI. Yeah, no, it was pretty bad. So, but um, back to Game Pass here a uh, little bit. Um, new game is coming out in April. I think it's April first, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, it's Outriders, which is a new game, I guess, similar to Destiny, and one of those looter shooters, cooperative games, like yeah, class based. It looks looks really good, and it's it, so far is getting a lot it's of. It's made by Square reviews, Enix. Like, reviews and stuff. Yeah, it's made by Square. Well, Enix. not they made by. Sorry, it's it's produced by or whatever. But uh, yeah. So yeah. published by them. Yeah. 
But um, yeah, it's looking really good. The the beta's out, and your progress in the beta carries over to the game too. That's so that's pretty cool. Um, I think it's crossplay, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's just I just hope it lives up to what all these the gaming industry is hyping it up to be. The previews are going good. The review, well, I guess, reviews. What will save it is if it starts out good, whereas Destiny didn't. Destiny always had to release like halfway through. They were like the remastered edition of our game where we fix the bad well, stuff. <laughs> the problem was is the, the they they thought they had enough content there, but those guys who were really into those kind of games mm-hmm. burned through it in like a day, a weekend. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then there's nothing else to do. And you're sitting around just playing the same stuff over and over just to grind right. levels and, and light levels and Arm stuff like that. Folks. And there was no point. But when they started adding those big content drops later on when those, all those other expansions, yeah, it, it became media. But that was a the thing then too. Those same people who burnt through the game burnt through that content. And they always brought the game down. They're like, oh, there's not enough content. Like, well, slow the fuck down. Well, that's the <laughs> thing. This is supposed to be a successor to MMOs. That's the problem. Bungie went and said in you know, Destiny 1, they wanted to make a successor to MMOs. They wanted to make their own MMO for a console. And they did, but they didn't do the content that an MMO has. I played shitty MMOs like Rift, and that had more content than fucking <laughs> Destiny 1 did. Yeah, so going back on Outriders, that's what's going to make yeah. or break this game. If it has enough content, or if it has enough content or not enough, that they're able to keep producing enough content, like weekly updates or whatever mm-hmm. it is, like kind of like Fortnite. Fortnite is only still around because they do updates every other day, it seems like, yeah. adding new stuff. Like that that's what made Fortnite. They're not as frequent as they used to be when Fortnite was at its peak, but they still have constant. And updates. they still ride like meme trails and like big, you know, publicity stunts like the Thanos event or uh right. the the in game, you know, uh concert. The DJ, yeah, the concerts, yeah, those it's are really a, cool. It's it's definitely um Or or movie night, you mm-hmm. can watch a movie in the game with yeah. your friends. It was pretty cool. Yeah, he went to reels or risky reels. <laughs> yeah, so I definitely got to say there was, um, there's a lot of, I have a lot of expectations for what this game could be, but I didn't even know it was really coming out until like two months ago. I started getting emails about and actually seeing real, you know, talk about it. Um, that's probably due to their, their. I think this is where they messed up was their poor marketing. Exactly. Like their marketing. Like I knew about it just because I follow gaming news mm-hmm. so heavily. And I, and I knew about it since it was released. But it has been one of those games where it's like, here it is, guys, and then it just goes under the radar. Here it is, guys, and then it's under the radar. And right now it's in it's it's in your face because it releases in less than a month. Yeah, so well, I haven't even seen anything like, about it. Go play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so it'll be interesting to see. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and what it's... About you, any, you got any comments on it, Meek? Uh, not necessarily. Yeah, like I said, I don't know too, too much about most of the, some of the topics on this week's... Uh... <laughs> This week's itinerary. No, that's fair. Yeah, it's all good. But, it's all good. Would, would you check it out at least? The game? Uh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, it's, yeah, it'll so be on Game Pass, so day one, we can hop yeah, on it. For sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Like yeah. I said, I, I got game, ca- game Pass. So, yeah, I just got, yeah, I got Game Pass game. solely for that. <laughs> I got Game Pass solely for that reason, really, just, you know, because there's always that time where somebody's like, oh, I heard about this game. I heard about that game. If it's on Game Pass, it's just like, it's lit. Let's go. I'll download yeah. it right away. <laughs> Right, and it's pretty cool that they've been adding all the sports games to it too. Um, Madden Twenty One's on there now, um, Two K Twenty One's on there now, which is only last gen's version, which is really weird. Like right. you still have to pay to get <laughs> next gen's yeah. version. Yeah. They got to, they got to fix that because Microsoft's been about everybody's been playing the old one anyway, so it's just like right, exactly. But, but um, on to another topic here, Roger. What's your thoughts on this here with the? Uh, a graphics card that we were trying to buy and they told us that they weren't going to have this in there but apparently there's a new beta driver unlocked for the 3060 card that are allowing crypto mining so nvidia said we got this great technology it's hack proof you know it's nobody can fucking break it it's awesome we've and it's not driver level technology so like you it's on the card with its communication channels and we, you cannot mine with this card. We have limited it so it can only play games and do what you need to do and not mine currency. And then they released a driver uh, last week for the 3060 in beta that removed that not driver protection for crypto mining. So people were like, thanks, we're crypto mining now. So now NVIDIA has officially launched a beta driver that people can just use 
could have gotten a hold of, and it's probably already circulating, the 3060 card, which was not for crypto mining, is now for crypto mining. Yeah, this is making this even harder. Nvidia literally, I, I I think it feels like a low key. They didn't, they knew what they were doing, and they're like, it's not going to be crypto mining. And the market goes, you suck. We're not buying your card. And they're like, they're not buying a oh, card. Yeah, and then they get yeah, sold yeah. out, and they're like, oh, it's sold out anyway. And people are like, I want to be able to mine with this. And they're like, yeah, go ahead here, mine with it. <laughs> like they were trying a publicity stunt. I feel like they just under the radar just tried to release it so people could do it and everyone's like these guys fucked us and they're like oh no we got caught with our pants down right it's a yeah, huge i'm, I'm kind of angry about that too because like it's i'm for furious those like us, we're trying to get a graphics card for gaming yeah this if they keep doing this stuff just makes it harder like we need a graphics card that that literally legitimately can legitimately cannot do crypto mine it because but those like, people will get them before us. Yeah, and that's the other they thing. They already uh, have a system set up to just press yeah. one button and buy, like, yeah. they can automatically get it. So, looping back, uh, looping, looping over here to the chat, um, talking to Sammy, yeah, I agree with you. These people are very ingenious. Don't get me wrong. People like, you know, uh, the conferences, hacker conferences and things like that, these people are crazy at what they do. Like our next topic, and not next topic, but two topics from now, we have another topic about somebody, just a random Joe Schmo who fixes things or hacks things to make it work better. Uh, the issue is, you, yeah, you I agree. You can just say that if you want. You, yeah. you can just say that. So, like, I, I agree. Like, you know, the thing earlier this week that somebody literally got paid by Rockstar ten grand because they figured out the loading screen problem that's existed for eight years or whatever. Yeah, it's it's crazy. The loading screen is now seventy percent faster, and you told us about and, what was happening me, there, Sammy. And, but uh, Miko, you you used to play GTA Five, right? Yeah, hell yeah. The multiplayer yeah. load screen. What'd you think of that? Oh my god! <laughs> you could you could literally go take a shower, come back, and you'd still be loading. It was insane, you know. And like it was just one of them things where you would get so sick if you lagged out of the game or something, or if you had to, you know, join somebody else. It's just you like it was like one stop shop. You wanted to. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, it was it was so so frustrating. That's what killed sure. the game for me. And some dude yeah. just randomly fixed it, and now and Rockstar's like, here's ten grand for fixing it. Can we have your code? And he's like, sure. So now the load times are seventy percent shorter. Wow! Right? Yeah, I think that's incredible. Like, yeah. what kind of, what kind of technology do they use? I mean, because like, they're they're just modding uh, it on PC. That's all. Shit. They just opened up the code and reverse engineered the issue. They found out what was causing it when they debugged it, and they just fixed it. Whereas Rockstar's like, fuck it, people are still buying our game. They're still paying for the in-game currency. We're good. Just putting makeup on it all these years. Yeah, but... exactly. And then this guy just randomly fixes it, and they're like, "Here's ten grand. Go ahead, shut up. Give us your code." Yeah, uh, Catacris, it's been it released in 2013, so it's been eight years since it. Yeah, almost. GTA Online has been a thing. Yep. But yeah, that, yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, I, I ten thousand dollars though, like shit, just yeah. just for doing something for fun, I guess at that point. <laughs> but like ten grand, uh, that's not even. That's... Yeah, I was say, shout out to him. You know, yeah. he could have definitely begged for way more. Yeah, and then on top of that, that's like only a fifth of my yearly salary. Like, not even, sorry, a sixth of my yearly salary. So that's, it's so low. That's such a low like, amount did, for did one job, and got paid ten thousand dollars. Yeah, that probably didn't even take a week to do. Yeah, so I, yeah. and and you know, Rockstar probably didn't care about it. So that's why. Yeah, like, hey, here's money. Yeah, yeah way. they haven't released a new GTA in years. So. Yeah. But Red so Red Dead did really well though. I love Red Dead. Yeah, Red Dead was pretty good. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see GTA six by the end of this generation, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. But looping back though to the thirty sixty, yeah, what really pissed me off is the card that was marketed as the non cryptocurrency card. They limited the the core way of mining cryptocurrency and then they just unlocked it. Yeah. I'm I'm frustrated with them. Like that's you, that, that's like a super bad PR stunt. The thing is, it's not even going to affect the sales in any shape, no. way, or form. They're like, if anything, it's going to boost them. Yeah, it's like the same Everybody thing with, who, you know. Of course. Uh, yeah. If, if anything, because like those people who are trying to reach are going to get it. Now yeah. Are going to want to sell anyway now even more because they're like, oh, you can crypto current crypto mine with these. Okay, easy sell. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, and. I I think it really sucks all in all, but like it's the same thing with the Texas Power Grid. 
yeah. nobody gets in trouble for you know ruining stuff or bad PR or you know people dying with these companies. Slap on the wrist, your sales go up somehow. Uh, yeah. You make a mistake, you make more money. If you make a mistake, you still make more money. Unless you're Joe Schmo like us, and you make a mistake and you get fucked over, and then now you're in debt. Yeah. So. <laughs> But, but um, a couple more gaming topics here this week. Um, Stadia, ex- their exclusive game, Bomberman R Online, is coming to PC and consoles. I've never played it. I actually don't even know what it looks like, to be honest. But I used to play Bomberman on 64. Yeah, dude. Um, we used to but play it, all it's the time. Funny how we, it's funny how we um, we talked about how Stadia closed up shop on their their first um, first-party developers. And one of their first-party development game, all right, screw it, guys. Just make it yeah. cross-platform. So, like, it's interesting to see. I guess they're just trying to make more money because they are, it sounds like they're struggling big time. Well, they closed it, so they're just like, at this point, let's sell off what we did make. Right. Might as well. I mean, I don't, maybe the game will get Stadia, revitalized with honestly, their community. Honestly, the Stadia is probably going to fall into one of those categories that it was ahead of its time and it just didn't have the appeal it needed. It would be Dreamcast 2.0. Uh, like honestly, Certainly, and I'll be Dreamcast. honest, Dreamcast was way better than the Stadia. <laughs> I agree. I agree, for sure. But uh, not much to talk about on that one, other than uh, Meek. Did you ever play any of the Bomberman games back in the day? Yeah, I was gonna say no. Nah, I can't recall. I was I never really played Nintendo sixty four too too much. If I ever did, it was just like Mario, you know, all the standard. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The main Sweet games. Boards, yeah, I never really, you know, dove really into it because like, I never had one for myself. I was, yeah. uh, I was always PlayStation, Crash Bandicoot, that that type of thing. No, that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah, no, sure. Sega, so I, had, I had a Sega. So that was, yeah, before a PlayStation. Sega was pretty cool, but yeah, other than that, nothing. So, the next game but, uh, we're talking about here, uh, have either of you seen or played Ghost of Tsushima. I have seen it. I've seen never it. played it. Never okay, played it. so it's Ghost of Tsushima. One of the Tsushima, games I eventually get for PlayStation. Yeah, it's one of those games that kind of, I would say, fell under the radar a little bit during the pandemic. Like it, it got such a small bump of popularity, and then it just disappeared into the wind. It feels like yeah. a bunch of streamers played it, beat it, and then moved on real fast. Mm. But. It turns out this week uh, that the stats accumulated from achievements across different platforms. The game has one of the highest completion rates of like all the uh, all the story based games, like first person you know RPG games of you know the past few years. It has over a fifty percent completion rate. Yeah, that's that's incredible because that was one of the highest selling games on PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Of all time, too, and to think about at least fifty percent of those of those millions of people who bought it beat it. Yeah, I mean this 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 game's going to be one of those cult classic games that's always going to be talked about. The game yeah. I heard looks. I mean, I've seen it, it looks like, beautiful. It has a uh, the combat. They said they they I forget how long they said they spent on the combat. It was like a solid three or four years they spent just on the combat part mm-hmm. to perfect it. And I was just like, that's. That's dedication yeah. to try and make sure that that and game is everything the that thing. they invented. It's all about mechanics. Mechanics are what makes a game. And I've said this before. Mechanics, story, and sound. The graphics, you know, people play some really shitty looking... Oh, fuck it. We play Minecraft, all right? That shit, <laughs> that shit could play on a toaster and people play shit out of it because the the, the gameplay mechanics, you know? Yep. You know, people play Goldeneye. It wasn't the best looking game. But it was the way the game played. Right. You know? and speaking about ugly looking games, like you can play the original Doom now on Game Pass. Yeah. Like the OG Doom game on Game Pass. And it looks horrible compared to, uh, comparatively to what Doom looks like now. But you still play it because it, it feels great. It was ahead of its... It was like the beginning of FPS. Like it was just yeah. a great game. So like you said, yeah, I, I definitely agree. But yeah, Ghost of Tsushima, man, that, that's definitely one of my games on my radar. Yeah, I definitely Oscar. want to grab it, actually. Absolutely. It, yeah, a, I have it. I never play it. It's a PlayStation exclusive? P, is it PlayStation PC, and PC, think, or is it PlayStation? I think it's both. I think it's... I would say, I definitely get it on PC, then. Yeah, no, it's... Um, it says it's only PlayStation 4. That's it. Uh, I definitely want yeah, to grab it, though. Um, the it, chat said... 
Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, that's what I was saying. It it wasn't a driver thing. It was on the hardware itself. And yeah, as Sammy was saying, it was about it being hardware imposed. So meaning, unless you had the key to unlock the hardware, you couldn't do anything. They gave the key out in the beta driver by accident. <laughs> oops. <laughs> they, they, and oops. then you know that, that 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 probably got copy and pasted and sent. And yeah, no, that's saying, that's okay. that's easily on the dark web already, if not okay. just regular torrents and forums. One hundred percent. Yeah, easily. and Nvidia is never going to get rid of it. Right. But uh, we got two more gaming topics. Then we can move on to our non-gaming topics of the week. Um, this one here, I know, Roger, you're, you're super excited for this one. And I know, Meek, you were uh, you thought this one looked pretty good. The uh, Necromunda hired gun was leaked on the Microsoft Store. This is a uh, uh, Warhammer 40K game, right? Yeah. So uh, okay. it is. It is. Um, it dates back to uh, the tabletop originally started in 96. Necromunda uh, is um, it's based on essentially a criminal hive world and you're in the underbelly of it. Essentially, these people are like um, almost like cage fighters. Uh, they're different gangs on this sort of criminal planet. And it looks like it's going to be a survival game breaking across the the Necromunda setting. And it's just going to be a fast paced shoot 'em up blood gore kind of game. Okay. Yeah, it seems interesting. I hope it's, it's you know, playing. it's not going to be like, um, it's not going to be like the new Warhammer game, um, the successor to Vermintide. It's going to be, it's going to be more like a Doom game, gun okay. in hand, explosives everywhere, chainsaws. <laughs> do you, do you think this will be like a multiplayer focused game, or I, do you think this will be? I, I think, I think it'll probably have some sort of co op, but I don't, don't expect much for like uh, a multiplayer, multiplayer mode. I don't think it's really going to take off. It's probably not. It's going to be one of those smaller games. Uh, I don't see it becoming a competitive scene because it's definitely not anything like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. What's your What's your thoughts, Meek? No, I thought it was uh, pretty cool. You know, they're they're you know sort of bringing a tabletop to life and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think it would be pretty cool for the culture that was behind it. You know, that probably played it when it came out in 1996. You know, to see it, you know, real life and to see you know them bring it to life. I yeah, think that'd be pretty cool. it's one of their settings that they've really invested a lot of time in in recent years because they revived it a few years ago oh, okay. um, and they've been rebuilding the tabletop setting for the past few years now. Um, okay. And it it looks pretty solid. Like I've thought about actually picking up a, uh, a Necromunda box just to play it because it's, you know, small squad based tabletop game where you build a, an elite group of a few guys and yeah. you fight in an arena that's you know no bigger than a few houses or like you know a warehouse mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah, yeah. so ho hopefully hopefully once it comes out it's definitely a game I, I feel like it's a game that might go under the radar but um it's warhammer I'm definitely, game, so. I'm definitely willing to check it out I, I don't think i've really played much of the any warhammer games yeah, honestly I'm there's there's so many games out there um honestly i my expectations are low so that i can be impressed yeah, that's that's how I look I, at yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. You know, if it if yeah. it plays out well, I'll be happy. I'd love for a, another narrative game in the Warhammer universe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. So hopefully we can uh, we'll get an official announcement. Hopefully in the next coming weeks because it's definitely it's not official yet that it's out, but it was leaked on the store. So yeah, <laughs> once it's leaked, it kind of makes it official. <laughs> yeah. And and Warhammer is notoriously notoriously famous for just giving us barely any notice about their games coming out. Like they're, they're like, like, oh yeah, it comes out next week. We've uh, been working on this game and uh, we've got NDAs, so uh, these people haven't talked, but we accidentally teased it. So uh, in a month, you get this game. It's like, oh, a month? <laughs> what? Well, that works. Cool, I guess. Yeah. Um, one last gaming topic, Meek. You sent it to us this week. This one actually looked pretty cool because um, also because Roger, you're big into VR gaming. I've never played VR gaming, but uh, I think it's called Wozier Gaming mm -hmm. Vest was announced. Yeah, um, uh, go ahead, yeah, Meek. If you want to talk about the vest, because I know you you sent it to us. What was your thoughts? Wait, what is it exactly? Oh uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I looked at a short video of it. This seems like you know it's something that you would uh, plug in. I mean, it does. It's not even incorporated with. VR per se, like you can just plug it into a lot of a ton of certain games, like uh, you know Battle Royale games, or first person well, shoot 'em up games and stuff like that. It's even for music. Yeah. That's yeah. that was the original idea. It was to yeah. make your wow. 
Because so, you, have you ever had those speaker cubes that you could like put on furniture and stuff mm-hmm. to make that into a speaker? Well, the idea yeah. is using your body as the microphone now, right. so you feel the music as well as listening to the music. Yeah, super yeah, dope. Yeah, I was seeing clips. Yeah, like there he was running through the game and like uh, he had gotten shot and he was just like, oh, but, like they were getting goosebumps and stuff like that. It, it seemed really really cool. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's just I think it's one of those next step to uh, uh, amplify the gaming and like actually feel like you're in the game, whether you're playing Sensory VR gaming, or whether yeah. you're controller. For like, sure, it'd be, it's going to definitely help with the immersion. Like if you're playing a shooter game and next, you know, you start feeling the bullets hitting you, like yeah, and especially if you're playing like some uh, like actual VR, I think it'd be really cool because when you're playing VR, you can do stuff. But like you don't feel around you. You have this and this. Yeah. You have that little bit of lens into something. I was gonna say, yeah, and I haven't really, you know, done any, you know, up to date VR. You know, I've done you know like old school ones, like you know, pretty like you exactly. know, pretty early on, pretty you know, crappy. But uh, yeah, I'm. I wanna. I've been. I've been thinking about that, trying to you know get into something you know, crazy immersive or something like that. Well, I've never if, done it if you ever want to try VR sometime after this. After this pandemic's over, you can always come over and try sometime. I actually have the Oculus. I have the Quest right now. I'm thinking about buying the Quest Two, and if I do buy the Quest Two, I'll probably resell my original Quest for like a hundred bucks or two hundred, one hundred fifty. That's super dope. Oh yeah. Because the new one, I bought the Quest. They re-release. They released the Quest Two like within three months of after I bought it for cheaper, and it has more hardware, better hardware. Oh wow. It, it, manufacturers yeah. have been doing that lately. I don't, you know, yeah. they're releasing newer phones for cheaper than you know previous models, and it, which is nice. But at the same time, right. you get fucked when you so, buy it, and you're like, no, yeah, it's it's cheaper shit. Makes sense, though, their prices are dropping. They're finding more efficient ways of making yeah. it. Yeah, the prices of the material are dropping. Like they're, they're VR isn't. More... Cons- yeah, it's not an artisanal thing anymore. It's not a you know, it's not a uh, a pinky out kind of thing anymore. VR yeah. is the next generation for gaming. That's we can only go one direction from here. Yeah, we can make graphics better, but the next thing is immersion. But I agree with Spooky Crew here. This vest feels like a gimmick for five hundred bucks. Yeah, I think it's it's a little overpriced, I guess. But I don't know what's all how much it goes into making one of these things. Like, it's five hundred dollars. That's the same price for the PS Five and the Xbox Series X. Like. Yeah. What benefits do I get from this vest versus the console? You know what I mean. Like, yeah. but it's it's one of those things where it's not meant for everybody. It's meant for those people who are seeking that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, I would and say it looked true. like it was a Kickstarter. Yeah, it was, looked a, like it. Started. And think, it, even better if it's a Kickstarter. Fuck, five hundred dollars. Go for it because you imagine how much money they. No, would no, have no. To they finished the Kickstarter. To... That's that's done. They did the Kickstarter. That was the oh, okay. belt part, not the whole vest. And the belt's still like three hundred bucks or something. <laughs> well, yeah. Hey, either way, it looks cool. Like I said, immersion is definitely the next step after. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the graphics are going to get to a point where it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's going to look real or not real. <laughs> yeah, and who cares it's whether it looks real or not? Or real. <laughs> yeah. But but uh, yeah. enough of the gaming topics this week. Um, let's move on to our non-gaming topics of the week. We got a quite a few here. Uh, I actually might throw in a couple more that's not on here. I'm going to throw some questions our way too towards the end of it. Um, we're going to start here with Harry Potter's Katie Lang. Um, she was told to deny her racist attacks when, while the, these movies were coming out. Um, she is a uh, Ch- was her name Chow or Ch- Cho, mm-hmm. and in Harry Potter that was the, the Harry Potter had the crush on her and stuff like that. Um, just to fill those in who don't remember her, but. I think this is pretty awful that she she was told by her publicist to deny these attacks all the time. Yeah. Like, they don't exist. Well, but that's she has the thing. That's the entertainment industry, Vic. That, hmm? That's the entertainment industry. What it, it's, it's a right. terrible industry. It 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 is It is a horrible industry, and it abuses and uses people. And if you don't fall in line, you fall out. Yeah. Right. What, what's your thoughts on that, Meek? No, yeah, it's... it's... I, I wasn't too too familiar with the uh, situation, but uh, definitely it's just yeah, it's just blatant suppression. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to you know really keep every keep the agenda going alive. You know, just keep uh, keep the money there. You know, it's just yeah, don't worry about that shit. It's, it's it, unreal. It's it's and it happened early too. It was in the yeah. early movies. Is the thing. 
So yeah, she 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 at first appeared in I think the Goblet of Fire if I'm not mistaken, and yeah. then she appeared every movie after that. Yeah. So that's that's four movies, five movies, four movies. Five right movies, there. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, because the uh, the last one was two parts. So five yeah. movies. She was in it. And, you know, these people are just attacking her on the internet, you know, with these racist slurs every time her and, name was the mentioned. Is, the crazy part is, I'm going to tie this in. This is this is actually another question I'm going to throw in here. It ties into, um, actually, it, it ties into our last topic here, but I'm just going to bring this up now. Because she's Asian, right? She was being attacked because she's Asian. And now look at it. We're still dealing with it now with those, those targeting mm -hmm. the terrorist Robert Aaron Long who just attacked and shot and killed all those Asian people at the spa. Yeah. Like, why are we targeting? And and the thing is, we're not labeling these guys well, as terrorists. Yeah, then, oh yeah. God, yeah. yeah. So I was gonna, oh, you're gonna wait. we'll get to the terrorist comment in a second here. But the issue is, it's it's about education in the United States. Mm -hmm. Our parents will say things like, for example, have you ever seen Clerks Two? There's a famous scene in Clerks Two where he's working at the burger and he uses a slur for black people. And he says about being a porch monkey, like mm -hmm. people say shit to their kids and then they impose these racist, these racist constructs. It's the same thing we were talking about with um, the Dr. Seuss books. You know, right. we're imposing we 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 give these impressionable minds ways to describe people when we're when we have an, a certain feeling towards them. You know, you can be angry at this character for Harry Potter liking her, you know these these jealous fangirls but like okay. for these people to it because that's pr i'm pretty sure that's what it was these are fans who are like harry potter's in love with this you know in, in attacking her and using racist asian slurs because of that you know if she was white it would be a different story they probably wouldn't have had all these slurs they they it had been more relatable probably for these people who were you know just of offensive so <laughs> <laughs> Said, I spooky, I please, spooky. I was, <laughs> I lost my entire train of thought. That was. What did he say? <laughs> uh, he said, um, he would let Bobby spit in his mouth. Bobby's at the house elf. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, that's what. I, what I'm getting at though is, we we teach these kids ways to attack people we don't like. Like you right. know, we teach them. You know, if you're angry at a black person, use the N-word. If you're angry at an Asian, you know, call them, a, you know, a chink. It's it's these terrible things that people can say, and then they get angry, and then they just let these slurs fly online. And yeah, and, and, and because no it's online, on it. that's exactly right. Because they're hidden behind, you know, they're... I wouldn't walk behind up to this. a black guy, uh, you know, sick, if I was an angry guy... And I was racist or something. I you ain't catching me walking up to a six foot five black guy, two hundred pounds, who maybe plays sports, and be like, "You're an N word," because I don't want to get laid out. <laughs> I, you know, I I don't want to find an early grave. What I'm saying yeah, is, but when these you're people, screen, exactly, you, feel you know, and people complain about how you know you can't cyberbully. That's bullshit because you either can you be on the internet or not on the internet so this person now feels threatened to be on the internet just because they were racist towards her and the the other issue is how do you solve that though how do the publicist what what was the publicist gonna do right. about these comments yeah. like i feel bad but at the same time you know people weren't seeking her out i'm pretty sure she was looking up reviews for the movie and stuff and found these racist slurs when she looked them up it wasn't yeah, like, you know, on Twitter, like people tweeting at her or something like that. Oh, okay. That would be obvious. Yeah. If, if there was actually tweets, cause I think what I read in the article is she was actually looking up, you know, things about the movie. She wanted to see how well it did. Mm -hmm. And yeah. people were just, you know, shit talking to her. Honestly, I think things like this, you know, should have been removed, automatically removed by moderation tools. And they're not, right. you know, Facebook, yeah. it's, it's Twitter, they worry about yeah. privacy and, and, and cookies and all this stuff. But why don't, why don't we, why don't they focus their same assets or resources towards moderation? Like they got to be able to, to yeah. moderate it. Yeah. We understand the freedom of speech, blah, blah, blah. But when you're attacking somebody, that's like hitting them or, or stabbing yeah. them. Like the people don't realize the mental, obviously we're going to get into mental health here at our last segment of the episode, but like mental health is ju it just as bad, if not worse than physical harm. Mm -hmm. And and it, this, this, you imagine she she would have just decided to commit suicide, yeah, because of that. 
and it's all about placebo really it's how you feel and so i think i think it definitely lends us to the topic that we're really going to need to face here and that is how do we moderate online like you know where do we draw the line between free speech and actual like threats of violence like people will say shit on the internet and nobody gets any repercussions they can be like i'll fucking kill you and say that on the internet to somebody in a forum shit ain't gonna happen but like Mm -hmm. you know if you say that in real life you can get arrested right you get labeled as like a terrorist like when you say that you get labeled for oh no 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 if you're white you're not a terrorist and that's our next discussion here this guy robert a aaron long like the fact that he just went in and like the police officer said, you know, he just had a bad day and this was his decision. I'm like, no, 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 no. That isn't a bad day. That is, that is somebody saying, you know, this, this is it. I'm going to just go kill people. And it just goes to show how bad gun control is in America. You know, we've got these gun violences every day. Some dude just got shot in Harrisburg this week. You know, yep. this shit is he, unreal. He was, here. he was from Texas yeah. up here for work because he's a truck driver and he was hanging out with like a friend I guess, in the wrong place, wrong time and got shot in the back of the head. Yeah. So it's, you know, we're, we're in a weird position right now that I definitely think people uh, online, I'm, I'm not one for tracking people, but at the same time, people are using the internet right now easily clearly visible locations to plan out and attack people in the united states and nothing is being done right well what's what's your thoughts on all this meek with the uh, racist stuff and attacking and going and killing people actually like targeting oh i just uh you know it's it's hard to wrap your head around you know it's hard to really accept the fact that people are that hateful you know, have that in their soul to really just resent, you know, someone so much just for, you know, the way they were born or, you know, what, you know, their culture and they, you know, feel the need to take their lives and, and right. the masses, you know what I'm saying? I, I never could, ne- I could, I, I could never fathom, you know, the, the psychology, the psychological <laughs> dismantling that they're going through that would put them to you know, lead them to do that. It's just, it's sickening. I hope we just, you know, the only thing we can do really is just, you know, make sure that the, the, the person next to us, you know, isn't a part of that hate and you know, all that dark shit. And just, you know, like I said, just constantly stay positive, pick each other up. But nonetheless, it's just like, how the fuck can we stop that, you know, without violence? Well, I, I can tell you one way is whenever this stuff does happen, make an example out of these people. Like we're we're not we're not labeling them as terrorists. We're trying to say, oh, they had bad days. Like we're trying to cover it up. We're trying to make it seem like they didn't mean it. Yeah, they mean they meant it. They did it. Yeah, exactly. Like what? Give them the death penalty. Then I, I didn't yeah. post it, but there was an article today that I read about a guy, a black man who owns his own house, whatever. Police came to the house and started like brutally beating him up and attacking him, insulting him on his own property. And they like dragged him out and then made up all these trumped up charges. The guy had a Nest camera doorbell and they watched the whole thing. And guess what? The car, the cop, none of this, like, you know, if a cop beats the shit out of you, it's not assault. It's just excessive force. And it's not a crime. No, it's it's getting to the point where, you know, white supremacists are running our, are running our cops at this point in a lot of towns across the United States. And they're not the brightest bulbs in the pack. They're not the best people around, you know, they're human too, but they don't get screened as good. You know, you could be a fucking psycho and still get in as a cop. It, it's a boys club is what it is it's dedicated to getting that position you know what i'm saying they, yeah. they, they, they love dedication you know loyalty you know just and they yeah like you said with the screening and you know the moderation and you know i just yeah, it's a lot with leadership and guidance man they just really got to do uh some filtering yeah for sure and why is america the only country that's really struggling with this other yeah, right. than third world and dictatorships and military regimes, why are we the ones who have to deal with brutal police officers? And, you know, look at look at places like Scandinavia. You know, we've got multiple countries up there and they're all doing well. You know, they have very little prison turnover. You know, if a prisoner get goes to prison, they they help rehabil- rehabilitate them. They don't put them into an endless machine of money churning. Yeah. 
you know? Well, you just said it. That's the problem with our, our country. Uh, yes. We're too worried about money, and other countries are actually worried about humanity. Exactly. Uh, it's just, yeah, the origins of, you know, the police, too, if, you know, you just go back to yeah. how it was oh, yeah, it's, stuff like that. They, the origins of the police in the United States are around slave catchers, you know, yeah. slaves that escaped. So their job was to go find slaves, beat the shit out of them, bring them back so that they could get killed by their owner if the owner wanted to. Yeah, that, that would be the, the uh, ranger. Yeah. That, that that that's why like the the Wild West, the Rangers, they they those were the ones that were actually uh, sent out to find slaves and stuff like that, which led obviously led to the cops after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, like like uh, Spooky Crew saying here, he's like, funny thing is about cops, they're not supposed to be beating you or shooting you; they're supposed to be there to protect you. Public yeah. servants. <laughs> yeah, and and they're so overworked as well right now with just yeah. like being called for everything. If there's an, any issue, the cops just show up. So they're always just out and about. They can never do, you know, community policing. Like, that's the thing. Community policing works, and nobody wants to show it. Like, a, a police chief in, um, in, like, Chicago or one of the Chicago suburbs, I believe it was, instituted policing, uh, community policing, where police officers were out on the streets with the people, getting to know their communities, hanging out with people, out and about, talking to them. Crime dropped, like, 40%. And then the guy got fired because they weren't getting enough people in jail, not enough, you know. Of course, no, the tickets. Well, making more money. To the yeah, main, yeah, exactly. the bigger picture, man. It's, so it's you know, penitentiaries fuel our economy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's real. One sec, I'm reading it's Sammy's true. comment here. Right. Yeah, I agree. Like, some there yeah. are some issues where mental health professionals should be sent to the certain I, calls yeah. instead of cops. Yeah, and not only that, it's it's like being able to help our homeless and our out of work. You know, a lot of times these people have mental they have mental issues, and so they can't. They're ha- they had a hard time adjusting to society because society didn't help them. And our mental health system is really flawed to begin with. You know, you know, conversion therapy is still a thing in many states. You know, that's that shit's unreal. Like it's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, so. for sure. And, and and talking about like rehab and stuff like that, this other topic here, which I was really excited to see because um, M- Miko, you probably remember him. Delonte West used to play in the NBA. Yep. And remember when he got picked up off the streets because he was like a drug addict and just mm, yeah, too. Homeless, basically. And uh, Mark Cuban, the owner of the, the Dallas Mavericks, picked him up and got him on the right track. And, uh, and interesting enough, he's actually, Delonte West is now working for the rehab center that helped Fit, turn his life around and he's helping turn other people's life around and he and mind you delante west west looks a billion times healthier oh yeah he all we did. have to do is give people the tools to survive it's 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 that's all it is it's literally what it is you just need to treat people like people and not like human cattle you know at work we call our hr system human cattle management that's what it is mm-hmm. it's about assigning a number and just freaking ear tagging every one of your employees and just not knowing who they are you know mm-hmm. it's it's a it's weird that people half the time don't even know their staff's name you know yeah yeah i i could i you know it, it'd be awesome if you know your hr knew everyone and knew their own job but they half the time hr yeah. doesn't even know their own job because you know hr isn't there to help people it's there to help the company against people attacking them so yeah Right, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. But, but yeah, um, back on Dante West, man, it, it, it's it's pretty cool to see the, the way that he turned his life around. It, it was sad to see how you go from making millions of dollars. Like, here's a great example that money isn't everything or making poor decisions. What money can can spiral and get out of control? So, My man went from making millions of dollars, being a superstar, to being homeless on the street, being a drug addict. Yeah, and that you know, quick. fucking <laughs> popping pills, drinking meth, that shit's out there, and it's addictive as fuck, and people just lose themselves in it. Mm-hmm. They become party yeah. animals. Right. So, yeah, th- this was good news to see see him turn his life away, and now he's helping other people that are mm-hmm. that are going through what he did. And It's always good to have somebody there helping you get through something that's already been through what you've been yeah. through. Yeah. They, know experience. Experience. Yeah, they, can, they can relate it. Because, yeah, he, you know, he got there. Mark Cuban reached out to him. You know, that inspires, you know, like, uh, pay it forward. I think that movie... No, mm-hmm. no, don't show that movie. I love that movie. Pay it for it, man. Always, it, it starts with the helping hand. You know, I mean, you know, a lot of people who don't have the, you know, 
privilege of having, you know, initial confidence to get to where they need to be. You know what I'm saying? It always takes that extra hand. Mm -hmm. Not always. I shouldn't say always, but it's always. uh, It's always nice to have somebody there to help you, somebody who's been there. You know, it's one thing to have somebody tell you, you know, it's it's okay, you know, we'll get you through this meth addiction. But if they've been to a meth addiction, they're like, yeah, I know what eye. it's like to scratch my eyeballs out kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Like, I've never been to that point where I've been addicted to a substance that hard, you know, like something that hard of a substance. Like, And there are right. people out there who have. So it's, it's nice when somebody can turn their lives around to help somebody else. Mm-hmm. But you, you pay it forward, you're our good karma, like whatever, like mm-hmm. someone helped you out now, and now it's your turn, like... And you just keep passing down because maybe that that next person you help out will help out the next person, yeah, or make an impact. Like you, it, it could have a huge domino effect. So, no, yeah, it, it's good, good, really exciting to see news like that. Um, other other good news and another way of helping is uh, Audi is abandoning the combustion engine development. What's your thoughts on this, Roger? Um, so what the idea is is Audi is is trying to make their next line of cars electric in I think 2025 is the idea. Mm-hmm. They want to have an all electric car line for every type of model, and they're no longer redesigning the combustion engine to make it better. They're only going to patch and try to continue to limp along the co- combustion engine they have currently for all vehicles around the world that can't get electric yet. And then mm-hmm. once they can get, you know, electric around the world, they want to stop it. Uh, and this comes, you know, quickly after Mercedes, I believe it was, declared that they were now done with the combustion engine. So I think it's it's one, it's a domino effect. We're going to see a lot more manufacturers here just, okay, we're done. Combustion engine's over. We're going to limp along and then electric everything because, you know, the automotive industry cannot bury electric anymore. Right, right. Yeah, I agree. Um, Meek, Meek, what's your what's your thoughts on like moving towards the electric car world? Because uh, I know you're a big car guy. Yeah, not for sure. I, just, I you know I love the classics. I'm always going to love the classics. Are they hard before the earth? Yes, but are they fucking cool? Yes, <laughs> like, yes, yes. But uh, nonetheless, I do like the you know transition that I see. You know, a lot of major car companies and manufacturers are taking towards you know these energy saving you know type of ideas and stuff like that. But I mean, nonetheless, there's, you know, not, you know, anytime soon, soon, but in the near future, of course. But it's just, yeah, I feel like, you know, it's a foot, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I hope, uh, you know, entirely, you know, the, you know, the flame and the, you know, I hope we don't lose that too, too much. I hope we don't go full, full electric, you know, full on just straight battery, everything. But uh, hopefully think- we can some time find some sort of, you know, in between area. Right, I, yeah, I think we're um, pretty far off from more electric. Yeah, I think that. And, and even then, uh, it's, it's you, you, they're not going to make electric. new combustion cars. That's the thing. Yeah. So if you have an old combustion car, you'll be able to keep limping it along as long as possible. And but, so we stop having gas stations that have gas. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's it's one thing, but then the other thing is this electric car push. It's nice and all, but it's not really the big killer of the environment. That's that's not that's not what's hurting the environment. The real hurt to the environment is factories and just and businesses and trash and just waste. Yeah. Human human, you know, refuse, whether it be, you know, scrap plastic and things like that to, you know, factories that still are pumping out thousands and thousands of pounds of carbon in the air. Right. Well, we already talked about that new, the newer, new plastic that they're coming out with. Yeah. So hopefully that will start taking over the world, so we can eliminate plastic. And then now we're going to eliminate the combustion engine. Like, we're it looks like we're starting to get on track as a as a yeah. whole for the most part. That we want because like if everything's made out of metal and like organic materials, we get to a point where it's a lot safer for the environment. Because right, right now the only way to get rid of a lot of this trash is to burn it, and to burn it just adds more carbon to the air until we can, until we can recycle carbon out of the air, you know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there's somebody thinking about uh, some kind of mechanism that they can come up with to filter it out. But yeah. I, it's going to take like the whole world to want to do that. Yeah. yeah. And so, well, but, um, what I mean is carbon recapture, Sammy. I'm not talking about like just natural. I'm, literally referring to carbon recapture and reuse 
right. which people are still working on right now as carbon capture technologies are existing. And that that's the other big issue. We have to definitely save the planet from complete deforestation and then complete killing of the ocean. Because if we keep killing off the ocean, that's where 70% of the oxygen comes from is, is algae and things in the water that produce air. You know, trees don't produce as much as the the water does. You know, organisms right. in the ocean and waters. But yeah, you know, the last yeah. thing we wanted to kind of talk about is a little going up and then back down. Bell curved our conversation. Um, yeah. Another another talk show host, uh, Stephen Crowder, uh, louder with Crowder, is um, is an asshole as always. So, did you guys see the video this week? Uh, the whole video with louder with Crowder. I yeah, I watched it and it kind of pissed me that pissed uh, me the yeah, fuck off. It's so louder with Crowder is essentially just a giant. Yes, he is a giant piece of shit. I'm sorry, he's a fr- proud boy asshole. He's a fucking dick. He's he literally he made these jokes this week that were just horrible. Like they were joking about black people can't be farmers because. That's too much like slavery, and no, that's not the core concept here. Yeah, they were like, they were like, didn't they try to run away from this? Yeah, and then now they want to be this, and then they were trying to like, set, trying to mock them and try to sound like yeah. thuggish, and then while they're trying to farm, and I was just like, that's not like, no, what are you doing? Just because they're black doesn't mean they have to sound a certain way or do yeah. certain things. Like, yeah. if you're black, it doesn't matter if you're black, white you know, Hispanic, you know, Asian, you can do what you want to do. And like, if you want to be a farmer, that's okay. (laughs) Yeah. Like you need food to survive. So like there needs to be farmers who cares what your skin color is. Yeah. The issue at hand is, yeah. Farming industry will always be here. It will be one of the most needed things in our life. Exactly. Why are you coming up to do for making money? Yeah. It's such an idiotic humor. Oh, man. man. This guy is actually trying to do well for himself and make money. Let's make fun of him because his skin color. And then let's bring up slavery a few times and make jokes about how his people were slaves. No. Slaves ran away from death, torture, and overwork. Like, you know, it's... It's okay. And, well, that's... Yeah. Slavery. That... (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm just covering it basically. So, it's... You know, the the guy is just making his own food. Like, you're going to mock a black guy for having his own farm in the back of his house? And actually taking care of his family? Yeah, right? Yeah. No. Because if you, the, if you the go dudes, to that period, so, the, the, but, they always leave their family and stuff. But They're it, actually their support now. And there you go. But this guy is like the the idealistic proud boy right now. Him and his buddies. Um, there are people that are in his circle that are essentially proud boys, white supremacists. It just goes to show how terrible these people are. They're right. horrible, horrible who people. Who has never checked it out? Go check out the episode. It's awful. Um, um, it'll probably piss you off if if you're easily triggered. Fair warning: you will probably be triggered. Yeah, it's definitely not worth it. But um, um, say, don't even give them. And the, then not only that, they mocked black people, and they their their idea of what a black person is is just like a little Wayne impersonation to me is what I pictured it as. The guy was supposed to be a rapper with a grill and he's like holding a pitchfork and they were making fun of him that way. And I was like, this shit's unreal that that would happen. Yeah. But um, let me let me circle into one last topic here. Um, Something good actually just popped up about two hours ago. Uh, it says the House has passed a bill that could give a pathway to citizenship for young, undocumented immigrants that are known as dreamers. I think this is pretty cool because you think back last year, two years ago, and Trump was basically trying to throw them out. Yeah. Get, get rid of all of them. Yeah. And now, now look, you get pretty you good and administration the in there and like, they're trying to fix it. The wall is not doing anything for our country. It's a waste. Like, the wall is literally cutting through, you know, property. Like, a guy literally owns a golf course and they were going to cut through his golf course because it was following the Rio Grande and half of his golf course was in Mexico. They were literally going to have to build a wall through his golf course. And the guy's like, you know, I don't want them to build the wall. And they're like, oh, well, who did you vote for? And he goes, I voted for Trump. They're like, he literally said about building an actual wall to keep out immigrants. And he's like, yeah, well, I thought he meant a metaphorical wall. You know, these people are so fucking stupid. They think just building a wall is going to fix this. No, people are going to get here. And you know what? America's built on immigrants. That's you know. What I'm saying. 
it, it, it is America. Yeah, <laughs> we are everything else. <laughs> the only thing that isn't like we as conquerors, America, the conqueror America, is literally built on immigrants. Whereas, like the original, you know, people fleeing persecution, people fleeing threats of death and violence. You know, we left, you know, England for a reason to make a better life for themselves. You know, these people built their homes here from many countries, you know, and just to, yeah, we have these undocumented immigrants and they're dreamers. I like, I get that the issue is that out there, what we need to do is have a clear defined, you know, a way of helping these people. If they're in yep. the country illegally, instead of deporting them and ruining their lives. And cause that essentially is giving them a death sentence. You know, yeah. we have people who are fleeing cartels or fleeing you know, local drug lords are fleeing, you know, people terrorists. run you know, terrorists and we're sending them back to their home country so that these people can get them and take them and kill that, them. That's more or less like genocide in a different way. Like you, yeah, you it's don't genocide with extra terror. steps. Yeah. Like, and the, and the thing is these dreamers, right? The, these are kids that are born here yeah. from their parents being not documented um, mm -hmm. in our country yet, like legalized citizens. So like, it's not their fault that they were, yeah. They were born and, here, and you know what? They, they should be citizens because they were born here. I was born no, here. No. I was a citizen. And, and you know what? If they're undocumented, fine. If you if they're undocumented, you can't deport them. My opinion is you shouldn't be able to deport them, but you have to give them a way to become a citizen, and they have to do it. And if they're unwilling to do it, then then deportation is a thing, in my opinion. You know, yeah. but I'm I'm not. They don't you know, do their part. Yeah. You know, these people, these kids are innocent, and they're born into these circumstances. You know, the, the circumstances of your birth should not dictate the life you get. Everyone should be given the ability to hit. Uh, you know, I believe in globalization. I believe in a global world where we can all work together to try and make our lives better as humanity. Because the infighting and thus the you versus me is tearing our country apart and the world. Right. But unfortunately, that's kind of how humanity always has when you think about it. It's always like, let me let me conquer and keep moving, conquer and keep moving. Let me. How can I get mm -hmm. better? How can I make my people better by yeah. taking over other people instead of having the mindset? What we have is I'm not going to take you over. How about we work together mm -hmm. and make things better? Like yeah. just because you're Mexican or you're Can Canadian or you're Chinese or whatever it is, work with one another. Yeah. It's so, not that hard. It's it's definitely interesting to see that the House passed this bill. It's a step in the right direction, in my opinion, um, because kids in cages only happened a few years ago, and that was inhuman. That was inhumane, beyond, beyond belief. Beyond that, that's like that's like putting people in concentration camps. More they, or less, they lost. They lost infants. You know, swaddled infants were lost, and their parents never got their children back. They'll never see their children again. Yeah, that's awful. So couldn't imagine that. Which this is a good segue because that kind of stuff can really affect mental health. Um, so with our last segment, like last segment of our podcast, we wanted to focus on uh, mental health a little bit more. So before we address worldly mental health stuff, I want to check on you guys, make sure y'all are good. Y'all dealing with any mental health issues at all right now? No, yeah. no. Stress has been pretty relaxed lately. Wow has been a nightmare some days because it's like walking on eggshells with certain people. Because I've got a, I've got, I've got groups of people from every walk of life, and you know you can get on your soapbox, but people aren't going to change. You have to, you have to mold young minds. Not, you know, you can't, you can't always change an older mind who's been in their ways longer than you've been alive. But young minds is the big thing, and I think taking that moment to say you know i come here and talk with you guys get my word in you know get to talk with chat a little bit i think this you know not only is just me getting on a soapbox and being able to do this but it also helps me get things off my chest be able to talk mm -hmm. about it of course of course what about you meek oh, for sure oh uh, yeah it's just uh i wouldn't say like mental health issues it's like uh, you know struggles that i feel like you know a lot of people go through it's just you know time management and whatnot and uh uh, you know, trying to find passion and uh, love in what they do, whether, you know, if they're at a job that they don't want to do or something like that, or mm -hmm. just in a position in life that they don't want to be in, you know what I'm saying? But uh, not yet. It's, you know, for the most part, I've, I've been, you know, me and my, you know, my girlfriend and stuff like that have been, you know, getting through it, you know, compromise and whatnot. Uh, I know I've been 
coming through my struggles myself and you know she's been inspiring me to be a better person i've been inspiring her and stuff like that so i feel like it's good to have a partner for sure because mm-hmm. uh they just you know always give you that extra push whenever you ever need it you know that's why i'm really appreciative of, of her and whatnot you know she's really been helping me out and uh but uh not yet other than that uh i yeah, I've just been you know trying to find my way man and she she yeah, i like the that's why I like this, you know, with you guys and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of feel like a shit box. I don't, you know, I got to miss weeks and stuff like that sometimes ah. because of how my schedule is, you know, because of what I, you and know, it's gonna my daily, day-to-day lifestyle and whatnot. You know, just trying to figure everything out and see, you know, how to, like I said, just time management is huge. Really it is. huge. Just I feel yeah. like I'm busier with the pandemic than when I wasn't. Right. <laughs> exactly. It's just, oh, no. Yeah, but uh, it, it's been good though. It's I've been growing, I've been learning a lot, you know, and just taking it day by day. It's been an awesome experience. And you guys, you know, yeah, that's why I like this. I learned so much more with gaming than I thought. You know, I already knew. I thought I, you know, I thought I was a gamer. Now you guys make me feel like I'm, I'm, I'm just some well, sort of poser. <laughs> no, it, it, it's not. It's not even that. Honestly, the, um, basically, what it is is you're more of a focused gamer, yeah. and I would say that me and Roger are more like a broad gamer. With 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 some specific um, things that we focus in on, but your your focus is Call of Duty and like shooters. That's how I used to be, and yeah. I, that's why I missed out on so much gaming stuff was because I was so focused on Call of Duty and Halo. That was it. Missed out on a ton of games. I mean, I'm just now catching up and passing Roger and Gamer Score on Xbox. It took me fucking forever <laughs> of him not even getting any more Gamer Score. I'm I'm getting Gamer Score and he's not, and it took me forever. So like, it's it's definitely a completely understandable but um me personally uh, i've been been dealing with some anxiety attacks again nothing too crazy just with kind of everything going on so i just revert to my journaling and um listening to certain music um i like to listen to uh john mayer um that helps me calm down for some reason don't know why i, I think i mentioned it on uh, the last episode it's just something i that i do it's something soft and enjoyable music for me mm. uh, okay. Everybody has their yeah their little niche. I like uh, Tears for Fears. Everybody rules the world, or everybody wants to rule the world. That's a, that's a good one. That picks me up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite songs. I mean, I've I used to listen to even during um, before basketball games is Stronger by Kanye. Kanye yeah. Like that song just classic. Just, it really touches me and like really gets to me. I'm like yeah, like I I can be stronger no matter what. Yeah, for sure. The power of will is a the most extreme power you can have man for sure mm-hmm. so I, I truly stand by it's just, yeah it's that's why i have a hard time uh you know uh wrapping my head around addiction you know is that is it really like a virus that somebody has no control over like you know it's but that, that that's a whole another conversation though we could probably touch on that another time though yeah that's addiction's a big thing and it's <laughs> it's just that inability to break you know that repeated pattern yeah Right, right. Um, I mean, just making any 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 change will always be uncomfortable too, mm. no matter what. Too. So, yeah. like, if you're if you're so addicted or so used to doing one thing, and then like you're trying to change up your lifestyle or stop using something or whatever it is, you're like, yeah, but I'm so used to doing this, and I really enjoy this, and whatever, and this is uncomfortable, and you don't want to make the change. Well, and the it, physical it's uncomfortability route. is the other thing too. You know, somebody right. who doesn't exercise, you know, that being out of breath or, you know, the soreness or like somebody who has a caffeine addiction, for example, you know, you stop drinking caffeine for, you know, a few hours and you get massive headaches, you know, you feel uh, nauseous. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of that. I, I can't say I cut caffeine out completely, but because I'll drink like a soda like once a week now, maybe, maybe twice a week. But once I used to drink the four, five, six, seven, eight. Ca- caffeine filled sodas a day yeah. and i was like this, this isn't good and i remember a while back when i tried to quit quit drinking that kind of stuff and i used to have crazy headaches and withdrawals and i'm like yo this is awful i was like i can't do this mm-hmm. went back to drinking again but now I, I cut it back down and i'll have a couple here and there and i'm pretty much good now i, I took the slow route got off of it now i'm good now i drink a lot of water gatorade stuff like that and of course you know gotta, gotta keep drinking my brewskis which isn't <laughs> greatest but well, i keep it in moderation, in moderation. I don't over- for sure. it's yeah. a balance to everything oh yeah but, for sure but uh do you guys know of anybody that's been struggling at all i mean if if you're willing to talk about that at all um i think it's not right to talk on behalf of other people but yeah. <laughs> you know 
people in my life, yeah, I definitely know my family struggles with with it, especially during this pandemic, you know, dealing with the fact that they're like, you know, don't worry about the virus. Don't worry about the virus. And it's like, no, <laughs> I'm going to worry about it. And, or, you know, dealing with the fact that health care is bouncing. Like, you know, my parents, for example, their health care bounced on them the other day. Turns out oh. they've been paying their deductible, but their employer wasn't using the money that they were taking out of the paycheck for that it just oh, was wow. the money was just disappearing and so he went to go get my dad went to go to the dentist and they're like you don't have insurance and he's like oh what do you mean i don't have insurance what yeah yeah that would have been crazy yeah That's and and the employer can just get away with lapsing your coverage like that no that's not fair yeah that's not especially fair. if you're if you're if you're fulfilling your part but they're it's not theft. yeah it's theft and, you know, the little man can't really go after the big guy because he works for the guy, you know? Is he going to yeah. sue him and lose his job that he's had for 20-some years? Yeah, that's rough. But at least, I mean, you could and just get get, yeah, get rid of the guy. guy and get a new big guy. Wait, wait, wait. Spooky Crew, your insurance from Giant, I guess, lapsed? Giant lapsed your health care? That's insane if that's the yeah, case. If that's true, that, that's crazy to hear. Like, that's because... a corporation. Dude, that's giant food services. They own like a lot of most of the grocery stores on the East Coast. Their competitors right. are Walmart and Weiss. Like, how yeah, do they crazy. let your healthcare lapse? And how is that acceptable? You know what I mean? That's insane. Right. And they, the little they, guy they can't try. fight them because they got lawyers. Yeah, exactly. Because they're disposable at the end of the day. You know, there's millions of people and on this planet. Even if they're going to lose the lawsuit, you want to pay your healthcare. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly you're right. You, you're lucky you even have a job. Like, I get tired of hearing that bullshit. Oh, that, that bullshit? Fucking boomers in there, you're lucky to have a job. You know what? You're lucky that I don't fucking blow your head off, all right? <laughs> you love your guns. Let me let me just show you what a gun can do. Idiots. <laughs> you're lucky I don't put you in a home. <laughs> you fucking asshole. You're lucky you ain't in a fucking home yet. I mean, that's all jokes there. Yeah, 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 right, you know. But that's the thing. It's like, you know, these people are like... sensitive and report our episode. Yeah, you're right. But it's like, you know, at some point, yeah, I have a right to complain. Everyone does. Millennials make up most of the working class at this point. We're taking the working class from people. You know, right. most of my coworkers are within five to ten years of retiring. Yeah. I yeah. once they uh, I have no one at the job that has less than 20 years, pretty much in my office. I have no one less than 20 years. Wow. So they're all they're all near their 30th year, if not more. That's crazy. Yeah. You, yeah. You guys are definitely taking over for sure. You're in the but, millennials, um, too. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> you guys. Yeah, I know. Guys, hey, you young folks. <laughs> you know, he's younger than me. I was talking about you guys specifically at the... Yeah. The, um, but um, do you guys have any recommendations to people who are struggling with mental health at all? And go to you, Meek, first. Uh, definitely don't be afraid to seek out help, man. Just, like, talk to somebody that you, you know... Well, I know it's, you know, a matter of, you know, there's not a lot of people to trust in these days, but, you know, find somebody that you trust, you know, just... Let it all out, man, and try to or even talk to yourself. Like that's what I do. I I actually just like speak out, you know, my problems and just you know facilitate within myself on how I can you know figure this out and become better or you know pass over it, you know, mm -hmm. for the betterment of myself. And this is yeah, it's just all about you know just taking that first step, acknowledging the problem, the issue, and then just having the courage to seek out help for it. Because you can't just go around thinking you know you're gonna get through life flawlessly you know what i'm saying this shit this shit's hard <laughs> you know what i'm saying you can get hit with a haymaker out of nowhere it's just real shit yeah but no nah, yeah definitely just yeah taking that first step just having the courage to approach it and uh mm -hmm. you know, be a better you right, right for sure what about you raj for me it's just you know you gotta you gotta know that nobody has all the answers Mm -hmm. And honestly, don't go looking for the answers. Go looking for people who the, who will be there for you. Yeah. Just even yeah, if yeah. it's just, you know, to be able to vent to somebody, get your feelings off your chest, you know, find that friend that's there for you, whether it's mm -hmm. a spouse, you know, a good friend. It doesn't, you don't even have to know the person well, as long as you, you know, and it's honestly, somebody you can relate to. Oh, you know. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Honestly, I, I want to extend to, every, to everybody that's listening in on that on behalf of what Roger's saying is, if anybody wants to reach out, reach out to us. I'm yeah. down to talk and help people get through some situations. If I can't help you, I'll find help. I'll, I'll get you in the right area if you need to. Mm-hmm. But um, go ahead, Roger. Just wanted yeah, to throw that. That's exactly like, what I was going for. It's you know, don't feel afraid to reach out to somebody and just say something. It, we're all lonely right now, especially in a moment like this where it's deadly to leave your house and, you know, hang out with people. But it's also killing people on the inside to stay at home and not go out. You know, right. we're, we're we, social animals. Yeah. And the Internet's right there. You know, detach yourself from, you know, toxic people. Like right. I, I had a, a good quote that somebody had uh, that I saw on uh, on the internet before. It's you know if you had eighty two thousand dollars, you know, and somebody stole sixty dollars from you, would you spend the eighty two thousand dollars you had to go chasing after that sixty dollars, or would you just say you know what, screw it, I have eighty two thousand dollars? Well, you have eighty over eighty two thousand seconds in a day. If somebody steals sixty seconds of your day to make you feel like shit, are you gonna spend the rest of the eighty two thousand seconds of that day? harping on it or getting bent out of shape about it you know sometimes it's take a deep breath and move on and get those toxic people out of your lives right right so, yeah, man. I, de- I definitely agree um well one thing that i that i've used was like i said was journaling F- find your niche too something that can take your mind off of some things too like whether it's gaming or um creating music or writing like anything art related is a huge help with mental health because like your mind, it, your mind's already going crazy. That it, it helps with the creative process. Expressive for sure, and that's just this is what your body's longing for. It just wants to let out what you're feeling. It yeah. wants to try to find answers rather than within your own. You know. Yeah. Now yeah, go on, Vic. My bad. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, you good. I was checking out the internet real quick. But um, yeah, like I said, music, gaming, writing, reading a book. Going for a walk, like um, Spooky Crew said, walking with w- walking and listening to music. Oh yeah, yeah. You can zone out completely. The, yeah, like especially right now, it, we're we're seeing the spring equinox. You know, we're seeing the spring actually begin. Go outside now. It's yeah. the the pandemic's not flying through the air. It's right. in crowded areas. It's transmitted from person to person. There aren't people, you know outside in the, in the forest shoulder. you know <laughs> yeah if you're going for a walk just you don't even have to go with anyone they don't know? get dark till like 7 30 now yeah enjoy it <laughs> exactly I'm loving it right right but um Seasonal depression is definitely a thing so, yeah. yeah definitely you yeah. know as the seasons get brighter you know we'll get brighter mm-hmm. yeah yeah for sure um, but any 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 uh, last thoughts or comments before we close out this week's episode? It was, it was awesome. Appreciate you guys having me on and you know letting me be a part of this. It was awesome. And shout out to everybody that pulled up in the chat. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, no problem. It's, it's good to have you on now as like a more of a regular. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to the chat definitely for you know keeping the talk with us. It's nice to it's nice to keep up with the chat. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, love, love the, chat. the engagement's great for sure but uh again also want to thank all the viewers that showed up today live and also want to thank everybody who checks us out later on youtube um um for those who are checking us out on youtube if you want to catch these episodes live it's thursday 7 p.m twitch.tv forward slash lunatic underscore oblivion so come check those out um but uh miko where can we find you at, man you guys can find me on Facebook, uh, Twitch, Instagram, mainly Twitch and uh, Instagram right now, though, because uh, it's just Facebook, you know, their layouts. Blech. But neither here nor there. <laughs> Meek Sweat, you can find me on No Space, Meek Sweat, anywhere. Uh, yeah, mainly on Twitch and Instagram. Yeah. Cool. 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 What about you, Raj? Well, you've already given mine away. <laughs> Twitch.tv <laughs> slash Lunatic Oblivion. And check me out on Discord as well, Lunatic Oblivion. I don't remember the characters after the hashtag. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got to find it out one day. <laughs> to to into it. But, um, yeah, I mean, I uh, just want to ask everybody to check out the, uh, the the talk show with Vic on the uh, YouTube channel or if you check it out live Fridays at 7 p.m. There's not an episode this week because um, I'm in the midst of moving. So I wanted to refocus on just the podcast and myself real quick. But uh, we do have some episodes up on the YouTube channel, the uh, the Chill Zone. But um, 
Check me out at uh, Twitter at Mr. Never Chillin underscore, Xbox at X Never Space Chillin, uh, Facebook, Vic Brubacher. If you have any questions, concerns, want to come on the show, holler at me. Or check out uh, my Twitch for gaming stuff at twitch.tv Mr. Uh, forward slash Mr. Never Chillin. But I want to thank you. Thanks again. Until next time. Peace. Peace, guys. <laughs>